Dennis, we've thrown a lot of practical advice at people, and obviously, if anybody starts something, a new business venture they want to succeed, let's condense it down to some of the key do's and don'ts. We've established the benefit of why shooting stock makes sense to people, but what are some ways that they can... Dennis, we've thrown a lot of practical advice at people, and obviously, if anybody starts something, a new business venture they want to succeed, Let's condense it down to some of the key do's and don'ts. That's a We've great question, and really the answer is like, hey, if you're working people, and you're producing, but what and are you're, some ways that they can better? You have a camera, you're doing the work. Normal production well, spend, you know, so hey, I've been on a shoot, video, and uh, I'm borrowing this camera, or I'm working for stock this, stock these people. Video, can I have an extra an hour just and shoot myself? Or I'm going to this location. Let me make sure that I book in another hour or two, whatever, to get the additional content that I want for myself for Adobe Stock in addition to the job that I've been paid to obviously do. So a lot of times I have to travel for both personal business and business purposes, extending my trip by a stay, you know, one extra day and saying, you know what, I'm gonna find some great things here. Like I've got a trip coming up to China, I've extended my trip by two extra days on my own dime to stay and shoot some footage. Right, exactly. Or I'm going to NAB and there's a lot of great national parks that no doubt have been shot a ton of times, but maybe I can bring something new to it or I can add it to my collection. And right. when someone shoots, wants a, a shot of Bryce Canyon or, right. or Zion National Park, that they're gonna choose mine. Right. Regardless, put that extra time in plan. Oh, I'm going here. What can, you know, just ask the question. Sure. What can I be adding to my stock portfolio when I go here? And this does allow, and obviously they'll need to have a conversation with their accountant or their tax, the person who prepares their taxes, but this does allow someone who's looking to enter into this world professionally to take some of the travel or trips or expenses that they're incurring and transfer those to a true work environment because they are doing this as a way to monetize their work. Now, you can't just say, oh, I'm gonna have a family trip to Disneyland and I'm gonna spend half an hour in the Florida swamps shooting. Your accountant is gonna say, look, government's gonna look at that. What was the principal purpose of this trip? That makes no sense. Right. But if you decide to extend for a couple of extra days and you're gonna be doing stuff, well, then you might be able to say, oh yeah, those days that I stayed at the hotel and that flight down there, totally deductible. I was there for business right. and I happened to extend it for a few days of personal vacation and I paid that portion out of my personal money. Yeah, absolutely. And I think coming back to one of the first things I said was stock uh, video shooting will give back whatever you put into it, mm -hmm. right? So if you know you just do it a little bit, it'll give you back a little bit. But if you're a, a creative professional, you're shooting for a living, you're creating content for a living, this can really be a residual income stream that can become a part-time income or even grow to a full-time income. What's really fascinating for me is like, obviously a lot of people uh, love to travel around the world. Mm -hmm. And you know, what's neat that I've seen is that I've seen full-time shooters. They, they started out part-time, it started paying back for them. Mm -hmm. They're like, I'm gonna go here, this place I've, oh, I wanna go to Alaska, I've never been there and I wanna go there sure. and I'm, I'm going to go shoot that and it starts paying for itself and it becomes this wonderful upward spiraling circle that it's generating more content, more revenue and you're going to all those places you want. But you're absolutely right, coming back to the tax issue, it's like, hey, make it work for you, extend your time, mm -hmm. also do the right thing, right? Right, well, that makes sense. Now, this is an interesting philosophy because a lot of folks are looking to make a shift. There's a lot of folks who've worked in the world of production for many years or they've been a photographer for many years and they're looking for ways to add additional revenue as maybe their professional life starts to wind down. There's no biasness here for age or background or anything else there's nobody analyzing your professional portfolio. You're just being judged on the quality of your work and how easy it is to find. This is an opportunity for everyone from students to people who are partially retired to everyone in between to monetize their work, right? Yeah, in fact, one great example is I have one guy who's a full-time stock shooter and is continuing to just build up his library, which in turn is building up his income. Mm -hmm. He's retired, he lives in an RV, drives around the country and shoots all the time probably loving it. And loving it, yes, for sure. I'm like, oh, how do I sign up for that? That makes a lot of sense. Now, obviously, uh, you know, this is not gonna be instant success for everyone who does this. And, you know, there is no guarantee of success for anything, but we've tried to provide some practical advices here that will increase the likelihood for success. 
What is it the important message, I guess, is that you know you keep saying you get back what you put into it. There is a certain ramp up period, right? Like a couple sure. of onesie twosies clips aren't gonna give you results. You have to hit a certain threshold of content and you have to be consistent, right? Right. Yeah, I mean, I obviously always continue to improve your craft and realize like, hey, I, just because you throw up a bunch of content, don't you know expect to be the next you know millionaire as a result of this. It takes time. It's consistency in terms of uploading. Like when we look at it, we also give we weighed in in some fashion how regular you're contributing. So if you're contributing on a regular basis, we're like, oh, this guy's really active. We want to make sure we're taking care of him. So you show those hits more. You, you... Well, it's more likely to surface once the content is uploaded. It might okay. be more likely to surface higher up in the first uh, couple weeks. So the other thing that I would say to people that are doing it is shoot what you love, right? Just if, you know, I would say like I'm a big wildlife guy mm -hmm. and wildlife sells and performs consistently over a long period of time, but is it as, you know, in the near term as valuable and, and important as lifestyle from a performance point of view? No, but I love it. Right, and, and 15 years later, that clip could still be making some money for you. Exactly, but if you're into shooting people and shooting portraits, like you're a photographer that does a lot of portrait photography, mm -hmm. just start to get a feel of the camera in motion or, or bring the tripod and start doing some pull shots and stuff like that. Shoot the portraits, shoot the people, get the model releases, shoot what you love. And I think that's an important message for photographers to hear. This is an opportunity because all of your sensibilities of composition and lighting will translate. Obviously, strobe photography won't, but if you're using natural light or constant lights, the logic of what you have there, of what makes a good still, will often translate directly into what makes a good stock video clip. Right, and the, you know, the revenue potential that you can make from uh, stock video is higher than photography, simply significantly because, higher, right? significantly higher, simply because there is just so much. I mean, I would argue that there's there's never an oversupply, so that would absolutely be the wrong word because we always need new content, always sure. need new fresh content, new subject matter, et cetera. But there's 30 times more people making stock photos than stock video, right? Right, and here's an area where I think stock video can be can set you apart because there's just, it's it does require a little bit extra, right? But all of that great expertise that the photographer has, he just needs to kind of, again, flip that switch, take the little bit of extra time, but use all of his experience, shoot video, and it's going to pay back right away. Thanks for joining us today, Dennis. This has been very helpful. I think that people will really enjoy this. Adobe has a whole area on its website for contributors as well about stock where there's articles and additional information. Sure. There's a lot of places. Obviously, there's a ton of information at the contributor portal itself. We also have, as I mentioned earlier, the Help X pages. There's a wealth of information, legal, technical, the basics, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of things like that. And then also make sure you're subscribing to the Adobe Stock blog where we're publishing content. We're talking about content that's wanted, the visual trends. I'm talking about stock motion and other uh, subject matter. So throughout the year, it's a great resource. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks.